is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Today I'm doing another kitten chat. I'm kitting up my next project because I'm working on the abstract mystery from Diamond Art Club that I showed a kitten up of quite recently. And to be honest, I'm getting through it quite quickly. It's going well. I've probably only got a week's worth or so of diamond painting left on it. So I'm getting ahead of myself and getting my next project sorted out. Um, so yeah, grab your whip, grab whatever you're working and crafting on and craft along with me while I kit up this project. So I unboxed this um, diamond painting on my channel probably a year or so ago now. It is from Diamond Art Studio UK and it's called, I think it was called the Gingerbread House or something like that. Um, it was I'll just show you quickly, although I would say just go back and watch my unboxing video if you want to see any more detail on it. Um, it was a Shutterstock painting, I believe, so it wasn't licensed with a specific artist, um, but from one of those places where it's okay to use the stuff to make diamond paintings. Um, so I got this, as I say, quite a while ago. I've bought two more paintings from Diamond Art Studio UK since then, but I haven't actually worked on any, so I'm quite excited to finally work on one of their kits. So this is going to be hopefully a fairly quick kitting up because they're in baggies and I've done some prep work already because I bought this one quite a while ago. It doesn't come with sticker sheets. They do now come with sticker sheets for storage pots, which is great. I decided to make my own today. <laughs> Normally, I just sort of use my printer copier to copy the side um, and then just use those and stick them on to my pots with sellotape. I decided to just get out my son's felt tip pens and, and make some for myself today. They're a little bit clearer because the sellotape normally just obscures the details a little bit. Anyway, there were only 38 colours, so I thought that that would be easy enough. So let me get those stuck on. So how is everyone doing today? I'm having a little bit of a chaotic week here. <laughs> we had, um, so Monday evening, my son was taking a bath and I was in the kitchen down below that room and suddenly realised that the ceiling was dripping on me. <laughs> Cue slight panic, we drained the bath. Um, my son wasn't very happy because he just like had this lovely big bubble bath poured for him <laughs> and he couldn't actually enjoy it. Um, why does that happen? Why is that a six and it's number seven? I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, there was uh, a leak somewhere under the bath my husband got down under there and found what seemed to be a slow leak but it seemed to have done quite a bit of water damage to the roof of the kitchen annoyingly there's one section that was dripping and then a bit further down all around an old switch which isn't ideal um although i don't think that that's wired in so i don't think there's an electrical concern there uh, we certainly haven't used it in years Anyway, <laughs> there's quite a lot of water damage around there. So once it's all fixed and dries out, we're going to have to repaint that ceiling. So I had to call around lots of people trying to get someone to come out. We, My husband and I were not very handy people. So when this sort of stuff happens, we maybe panic a little bit because it's always, is, is this an emergency? You know, if we leave this, is it going to get really, really bad? But he managed to um, get underneath, find out where the drip was, get a towel under there. Um, so it stopped coming through. And we found someone really nice who's nice, got great reviews, local to the area, um, who's going to come out this afternoon. So hopefully that will be an easy fix and hopefully not too expensive. <laughs> we shall see. Um, yeah, and then I've got a meeting tonight. My son is in year four, um, which is, if you're not a UK person, you don't know what that means. It's the year they're in when they start the year turning eight. No, they start the year as eight-year-olds and they turn nine. Um, and they have a times table test in the summer this year. I'm not particularly a fan of doing formalised testing on kids this young, to be honest. I, I wish that it wouldn't happen, but it's not my choice. Um, that's what they're doing. And my son actually is pretty confident in maths. He's good on his times table, so it shouldn't be stressful for him. So although I really feel for the kids who will be put under quite a lot of stress doing this at this age, it, it shouldn't be a problem for him. But anyway, we have this meeting on zoom with the school just to fill us in on how it all works 
So I've got that tonight. And then tomorrow, I've now got an appointment for an ultrasound of my kidneys. If you watch any of my recent chatty videos, I was filling you in on some of my health issues. And my doctor is just investigating some things relating to my blood pressure and why my blood pressure is quite high. Uh, and part of that is apparently investigating various organs um, because they all feed into how the kidneys, no, how blood pressure is performing, basically. So, right, I've just done all that and I've realised I might need to know the DMC as well. Yes, I do. So these are labelled with the DMC, so I need to have the kit nearby <laughs> so I can actually see what's going on. Right, let me position that under here. And then you can't see the DMC code, but I can. Can I arrange that any better so that you can? <laughs> Not really. Okay, <laughs> I'm just going to leave that like that. I'm sure that you don't care. So yes, I've got that tomorrow evening. I'm not looking forward to that. It's at 6.45 in the evening, so I'm hoping the traffic won't be too bad. <laughs> the instructions say, before you, about an hour before you go, you need to drink at least two pints of water um, and then not empty your bladder so that you have a full bladder for it. Well, if I did that, I tell you, I would literally explode. So <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna adjust that for my own body's ways. <laughs> That's probably TMI, isn't it? But yeah, a bit horrified by that. And then the other thing that's going on this week is just lots and lots of filming. I've got a few videos that I'm filming. I don't, you can probably tell that I quite often film ahead um, and get ahead of myself with videos because um, it's about two and a half weeks till the Easter holidays here in the UK. Um, I need to actually crack on, not just chat. So 977 is number 23, which is the question mark symbol. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, <laughs> what was I saying? Easter holiday is coming up. And that means that my son will be home off school for two weeks. We're also going away for about a week of the holidays. So I want to have all of the videos for that two week period filmed before he goes, um, as well as just generally being on top of things. Um, so I've got to get all the videos for up to then. And yeah, <laughs> about the next month's worth of videos I need to film in the next couple of weeks. So I think I'm filming four this week um, and yeah, similar next week. Yeah, I've got it all planned out. <laughs> I like having plans around these things. And don't worry, I'm not putting myself under pressure. I like getting all this done. I enjoy filming. Um, but yeah, it's just taken a bit of working out what will be ready to film when um, and how I can fit it in. So yeah, busy week. Oh, I don't think these are all going to fit. I'm actually, I know a lot of people really like it when um, kits come in baggies like this I'm not a massive fan of it although I don't mind obviously um but the one thing that is handy is that when I've got more drills than can fit in a pot I can just put them straight back in here hopefully that won't have me too many of them I wonder if there's a better way to do this. Maybe I can pour straight from the baggie into the pot. Because I was hoping this one would be pretty quick and easy. And that's going to take a bit of time if I have to do it that way. Right. Anyways, so yeah, busy times. This one's not all going to fit. My husband's at home a bit more now. It was the last week of university term last week. So he's entering his, oh, that's easier, his quieter part of the year now. So he works at Oxford University and they have um, eight week terms, three eight week terms a year. So obviously his job is throughout the year, but his busiest times are bound to be term time when he's got actual teaching on. And it tends to be for him that the first term of the year is just absolutely manic. He's really quite overworked in that term. The middle term, just because of the nature of his, his jobs and the, and the way it all works out. Um, the middle term is 
sort of, you know, standard normal workload and then the summer term and then of course through the summer holidays and stuff tends to be much much lighter and easier for him to manage so it's quite a relief for him to get to the end of that second term last week because that means he's ah! <laughs> he's now heading into his quieter part of the year um where he gets a bit more time to spend with family and all of that kind of thing obviously still working just with less Less in the way of day-to-day -day deadlines and that kind of thing. 19. So he, well, he is at home today. He's been doing some teaching upstairs um, that isn't part of his normal university teaching. It's something else that he's taken on privately. Um, and he has to head into college in a little bit, but he's currently out for a run. So I'm taking the opportunity to do some filming. I always prefer to film with no one else in the house if I can, just because I get too self-conscious. I mean, I will film with him upstairs, but I always make him stay out the way. Like, don't come where you'll hear me. <laughs> I do get really self-conscious about these things. One of my sisters is now watching a few of my videos, and I love that she's watching to be supportive, but it does make me cringe a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, if you're watching, <laughs> thanks, but... <laughs> um 826 is number 15 yeah so what else has been going on so last week last weekend we went to my husband's parents for the weekend they asked if we were free for the weekend and if we wanted to do something and often they come down to us for the day but we said why don't we just go up there they're only about an hour and a quarter away from us and we hadn't just been up there for the night for a long time so we went up there after my son's football on Saturday and had a night with them. So that was really nice. We went out for a meal, um, which was, it was fine. It was nice food. Um, and then we came home and played a game. My son really wanted to play this game that we played at Christmas called Logo Link. Um, there's a game called the Logo Game that we've all played for a while. And this is like... Uh, an extension I suppose of that or a change anyway <laughs> he, he finds that he can join in so he loves playing games and obviously most board games that aren't specifically designed for kids aren't that accessible to him but this is one that he's able to join in with sort of just about enough that it's still fun so we played that he switched teams halfway through <laughs> He started off playing with my in-laws, his grandparents, because he obviously backed them to win. And then my husband and I were actually doing a little better, so he switched teams. Little so-and-so. And then the Sunday morning we went and bowled. Well, I say we. I don't bowl because, I mean, I don't particularly enjoy it. But also the way my shoulders are, the sort of muscular issues I have with my shoulders, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it it wouldn't work well. I think I would be in quite a lot of pain. I haven't actually tried to do it for years, but then my shoulders are worse than they used to be. So, yeah. <laughs> but the other four of them bowled. And um, afterwards, we played a bit of pool. Another of my son's great loves. So, yeah, he had a really good morning. And then we stayed for a nice Sunday lunch. And came back in the evening. Nice little weekend away. Oh. Spilling everywhere. <laughs> Deary me. Last weekend was a big old week of releases as well with Diamond Art Club. There were some really nice ones. It was so I'm not sure what date this is going up. I think this video is probably going up towards the end of this month. So by the time that this goes up, you'll already know that I have now started doing sneak peeks for Diamond Art Club. In fact, my very first one is arriving today because it didn't actually get here in time for release. So it'll be going up later today as a, a first look. So that was very exciting, my, my very first week. And a painting that, you know, I would have wanted anyway. So it's just so nice to be asked to do a sneak peek for that one. And then there were so many other nice ones as well. Um, so I actually ended up buying two other paintings last week. It was an expensive week for me. I um I got the Yume, which is called oh gosh I can't remember the names of things. 
um it was something involving stars it was the one with like a wolf and mountains and this big starry sky gorgeous i really loved it um I'm, I'm sort of hit and miss with you may pieces um she's one of the really popular artists at diamond art club and some of them don't do it for me as much as they do for other people some of them i absolutely love and that was that was in that category and then the next day i i was mulling things over and i went back and got the new um dakota dyke Weiler, the little one with Hugs for Hiccup, I think it's called, because I have plans for that one to do with my TikTok, um, which, yeah, I won't say here, but if you follow me on TikTok, you will see that video. No, nope. <laughs> you'll see that painting featuring on there soon. So, yes, it was a very nice week of releases. I've decided for now, I was speaking earlier in the year a lot about cutting my stash down and that kind of thing, and I am cutting it down a little bit. But I think my focus is shifting more just because I'm I'm realising more and more. I'm just embracing the fact that I really like the the collecting element, the the enjoying pretty new releases coming out and managing to get hold of them and that kind of thing. So I'm just embracing that at the moment. And if there's a painting that I really like, I'm going to buy it if I can afford to. And then what I always find happens with me is if something sits in my wardrobe for a while, I just reach a point where I'm like, look, I still really like the picture. I wouldn't have bought it if I hadn't liked the picture. But if it sat here for like a year or more and I don't have any inclination to kit it up right now still, I just I'm not going to work on it probably. So what I'm going to do is de-stash kits a bit more regularly, I think. Um, there are various de-stash groups in the UK where you can sell them on and get probably most of your money back. Um, oh, there's two black ones. I wonder if I can, yeah, I might try and consolidate those into one bag. Um, so yeah, get my money back more or less and then buy the new ones when they come out that I really like. So that way I'm not really spending more money over time because that money that I get when I de-stash paintings will be earmarked for new releases, but I get to enjoy all the fun of new releases. Now, I know that this is a massively materialistic stance and a lot of people won't feel the same way as me. This is just what I've come to realise is, is the best way for me to handle things at the moment because I don't want to feel guilt when I see pretty new paintings and I really, really want to add them to my collection. So as long as I'm handling it in a way that is affordable and I'm not, you know, selling them on for big profit or anything like that, I don't think that I'm doing anything wrong. I'm just, I'm doing it for me. So that is my current stance. Keep the stash at the same sort of size it is. Definitely don't let it continue to get bigger and bigger. Um, but yeah, just sort of one in, one out kind of thing. <laughs> just a teeny smidge of static in some of these which isn't unusual when they uh they come in baggies but I'll just have to watch out for that a little bit when I'm working on them oh and I've spilt some over here of course <laughs> always do three seven four three is thirty two So yes, what else is going on? I've got a cat sitting job again this weekend. One of my, I don't know, it, it seems wrong to call her a regular because I think the last time I looked after her is September. But I think that pretty much when they go away, they book me um, because I have a good, I was gonna say, I have a good relationship with the cat, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I get on well with the cat who's who's quite nervous um and doesn't necessarily like everyone but she's I mean she's very nervy I have to be very very slow and gentle and careful with her but she'll normally let me give her a few strokes and she seems happy enough when I look after her so so yeah I've got that coming up ah! oh dear this one's not gone well they started to spill and I just thought <clears throat> I'll just go with it and deal with it afterwards <clears throat> but they did scatter a bit more than I thought. Oh, 
I'm wondering how I'm going to juggle things later this evening. So I've got the the plumber coming to fix the um, the leak, <laughs> the leak under the bath, and then I have this meeting at five with the school. So he's coming at four-ish, the meeting's at five-ish, and then somehow I've got to fit in cooking dinner as well. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's going to be a busy couple of hours. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. I'm just going to have a drink of water. Hopefully that'll be better. <laughs> so yeah, it's bolognese tonight. I need to go get some of my husband's bolognese out of the freezer. Oh my goodness. Why have I lost the knack for pouring out of these bags? Um, so what I do, because my husband's vegetarian, there is a particular lentil bolognese recipe that he really likes. So I make that for him in the slow cooker. And then my son and I have a beef bolognese. But it's a lot to cook both of those in one day. So what I do is I never make a small amount of bolognese. I think lots of people do the same thing, really. Um, anytime that I'm making bolognese, I will make as much of it as I can fit in my um, big pot that I use. And then have lots of portions in the freezer. So I think I've got the last portion of my last batch of lentil bolognese to get out for my husband today. And then I'll have to cook for him next time. So I'm making the beef one today. <laughs> And then a lot of that will get set aside in little mini pots that my son then takes to school with him for lunch. He really likes having hot dinners at lunch for school. He's, he's not one for sandwiches and things. I think I've said this before. I don't know if any of you have got the same sort of situation with your kids. Let me know what you do for them if you send Pat lunches for them. Because I find it really hard that he doesn't like just sandwich type things and I get it I'm not a big fan of sandwiches myself either but <laughs> everything else is a lot less convenient so I'm constantly having to plan meals around making leftover type things for him he will have wraps so he'll have wraps once or twice a week with like pepperoni and, and cheese and stuff like that in them but yeah do you have any amazing tips for me about what you send your kids into school with? I just, I like him to have variety, but it's it's hard because there's only so many meals that he will have that way. And he's he's a bit of a fuss pot, to be honest. Like evening meals, he gets what he's given. We have family meals. If it's something that he has a long track record of not liking and I know he doesn't like it, then fair enough. I'll do him an alternative if I'm making that meal that night. But if it's something that he's OK with, then, you know, we all eat things that we don't love sometimes. Right. And it's actually not a strong point of mine. I, I tend to have food aversions and struggle to eat things that I don't really, really like. And I don't want him to be the same way. So I just try and gently nudge him. But then he won't have those same things for lunches. So for instance, he quite likes a chilli. He'll have a chilli with my husband, because I don't particularly like chilli. They'll do that sometimes for dinner of an evening. But we've got pots of that chilli in, um, in the freezer and he won't take them for lunches. He doesn't like it enough for lunches. It's a little frustrating. Um, because I do have some issues with food myself, I do try to be accommodating. And I know that these things aren't always as simple as just being fussy. I think the thing is, it's really variable with him. So some days he will be absolutely fine and he'll be really good about trying things and he'll accept eating things that he doesn't love. Um... And then other days he'll really struggle with it. And I and I think that's all very genuine. And I think my tolerance for trying things on different days varies as well. It's just, it's a little tricky to manage sometimes around family meals and lunches and that kind of thing. Like we would quite like him to have school dinners a few days a week, but he just, he won't. He doesn't like any of them enough. But he, he could eat them. He just, he doesn't want to. I don't know. It's a bit of a weird ramble there. Let me get some of these empty drill bags in here for rubbish.
This weekend is also Mother's Day in the UK. Oh, got lots of this colour. So I have got my mum. I think I spoke in my last video about not knowing what I'd get for her. <laughs> I've got her um, a pair of bellows, <laughs> as you do. She was in a pub in West Wales last week and she sent us in our family WhatsApp chat a picture of her um, using a pair of bellows on this open fire and saying, oh, I wish I had bellows for my fire. <laughs> and I was saying last time, Xander, sorry, the cat wants to get out. And now the doorbell's going, hang on. Floyd is in the building. <laughs> I'll be filming that later today. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so she sent this picture of her and saying, oh, I wish I had a pair of bellows. Wow, I was saying in my last video that I was really running out of ideas for things to get her. So I was like, right, that's me. <laughs> and I messaged my siblings to see if anyone else was thinking of doing the same because she'd sent it to all of us. And my sisters wanted to go in on it with me. So we've got her a pair of very nice looking handmade bellows. <laughs> it's very random, but what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, what am I doing? That was going in there, wasn't it? We don't really have any plans for our own little family unit yet. Other than the fact I've informed my husband he's cooking on Sunday, obviously. I really fancy this recipe, which it's a Mary Berry recipe for like these honey and mustard glazed pork chops with this creamy sauce and nice herbs and that kind of thing. Anyway, we've made it on and off for years. He'll have it with fake chicken breasts. And he makes it better than me, annoyingly. <laughs> so I have made it sometimes, but he makes it better. So I've, I've asked him to make that on Sunday. That one poured out nicely. I'm really looking forward to trying this kit. Like I was saying at the start, I've, I've got three from um, Climbing Art Studio UK. All of them are on the channel. So if you're interested, do go check them out. But they seem to me like a really nice quality kit. Like nothing that I'm seeing looks concerning. You know, the drills are resin. I've heard other people saying they really like the drills. And uh, the canvas is nice and clear. They, since I bought this one, and this, as I say, was a Shutterstock image, but at the time I was, I didn't know that. And I thought, well, they don't really have licensed artists. I've made a mistake here. They actually were using Shutterstock images, but even so, since then, they've moved more towards licensing artists and licensing a variety of different artists. I don't know why I've got an orange background for that one. I think I misread that. <laughs> Um, so they've got quite a few going on now and they're a UK based company, which is unusual. I'm so used to having to buy things from abroad. We do have sort of two or three decent quality UK based companies, but they don't all have stock in the UK. And the thing with Diamond Art Studio is if I order from them, if I ordered from them right now, there's a good chance based on my previous experience that it would get packed up today, sent out and arrive tomorrow. It's really, really quick. And I think that delivery is even free over a certain spend. So yeah, if they are, oh, that one's a bit staticky, isn't it? If the quality is as good as it looks like it will be to work with, then I look forward to placing more orders with them in the future. But I really wanted to get one out and work on it because at the moment I feel like I've got three from them. Don't particularly want to buy any more just until I've checked that I like their style. Because of course it's not just about the quality. Different companies have different rendering styles. I'm very, very used to Diamond Art Club's rendering style just because I do a lot of their paintings. And some other companies as well, of course. But I just, yeah... I, I I just want to make sure that it works for me personally um, before I invest any more money in them. They do ship internationally, I believe. So you should check them out wherever you are. I don't know what prices will be like, of course, if you're buying from abroad. Um, 
but yeah they're very reasonably priced within the UK for a quality item they also do this thing that I've I've I love that I've mentioned before in some of my videos where they do um they have what they call a wonky range and what that is is kits that have some sort of imperfection um and they sell them at a discount well I bought one on there a few months back and you can check it out on the channel if you're interested it was um the Times Square one I unboxed from them and it had I think 10% off and I mean, I could hardly even find the blemish. It turned out there was like one little black mark on the back of the canvas. So the back of the canvas, nothing even to do with the picture. Um, and for that, they had discounted 10% off it. And I just thought that's such, I mean, obviously I liked it because it saved me money, but I also just think that says really good things about a company, that they're that concerned about providing really good quality that, a tiny little blemish like that gets you a 10% discount. They have a rewards scheme as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure the ins and outs of how it works. All I know is when I have ordered things from them, I get points on my account. And then when I'm checking out, I'm able to just select to add those as a discount. So, you know, it's just been a, a few quid off here and there, which is always nice and appreciated too. 3852. Oh. <laughs> I was um filming yesterday my um sort of accessories collection. My recent accessories collection. Oh gosh, look at the static in that one. I think I might actually have to get a cotton bud for that because that's bad. Or piece of tin foil maybe I can get a bit of tin foil in there and see if that will deal with it because I actually have some of that to hand bear with me a moment yeah I have these to hand because I tried these in my abstract mystery kit um because I'd, I'd just seen the tip I think I've overfilled this for doing this to be honest but we'll, we'll give it a go um and someone had said that this really works and I tried doing it then and I didn't really see any difference. But then when I came back to work on them, like when I actually started working on the kit, the drills in those pots really had settled down and were less staticky. So I don't know if it's something that takes time to work. It's something sciencey to do with an exchange of electrons is how it works. I can hear my cat thundering around upstairs. Um, so yeah. We'll see if that does anything. And if not, I will get going with some rubbing alcohol and stuff in there before I actually work on these. 156 is this first one. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so I, was, I filmed this accessories um, kind of haul, if you like. <laughs> um, it wasn't really that because it was things I'd bought over the last few months. But I mentioned in that, that I'm thinking of joining up to one of those post forwarding companies. And I asked in a group I'm in yesterday and got um, lots of recommendations. So there's one I think I'm going to try that a lot of people in there seem to find good. So basically, it's a company where, ah, oh God, maybe I should just go straight for the alcohol wipes. This is a bit, yeah. Let me, let me get the uh, cotton bud out. Right. <laughs> um, this is a very disjointed story, isn't it? So basically, what this will do is it will give me a US-based address um, at this forwarding company. So I can order from shops that maybe don't send to the UK or um, shops where they do send to the UK, but shipping to the UK is really expensive get them sent there and then for a small fee they will kind of add all my packages together and then ship them in one and the shipping rates are supposed to be okay obviously it might cost a little bit to ship that package but it will be less than if I'd 
paid for all of them individually, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like a lot of the things that I want to try are things like um, putties and stuff where you're buying this little pack of putty, which doesn't weigh much, but because of the nature of shipping individual items, the postage that that seller is having to charge is like £15. And, um, you know, I can't justify that. So I'm hoping that this will be a way to really indulge my obsession. Uh, will those even all fit? They won't even all fit. What are you doing, woman? Oh. Um, yeah. So I'll try that and let you know how I get on. But I thought I'd mention it because there will probably be plenty of other people in the UK in the same boat as me who, who might benefit from it. Um, but also the same thing applies to people in other countries. I know there's people, for instance, um, I saw recently that people in South Africa are having problems getting post. And there was a great um, YouTube I watched the other day that helped put this idea in my head from a YouTuber whose name I can't remember now. It it involves Kim. <laughs> anyway, she's she's a South African and she was talking about these things. So, yeah, it's a good service that's out there if you're not familiar with it already, um, which I've heard good things about. I've spoken to people who do use these services and have had good experiences with them. So worth checking out, I think. There's so many things over the past couple of years where I've looked on Etsy and be like, oh, I really love that tray or that pen or whatever. I really want to buy it. And then you look and it says, it doesn't ship to the UK. It's like, no. So, ah. <laughs> oh dear. I do not like kitting up from baggies, it turns out. I think it's just what you're used to, isn't it? Most of the companies that I work with most often use the sealed packs. So that's just, that's what I'm used to. Right, almost there. That must be that one. There we are. Yeah, I can't believe how quickly the abstract mystery is going. And that I'm already kitting up and like lining up my next one after this because I don't know maybe I've had a bit of a burst recently and I'm going a bit quicker or something like that I just I never oh okay right so DMC 702 is this one which I've already filled but they've provided a crystal so I guess that's like an option how am I going to do that so that I remember when the time comes because I probably will use the crystals. Like, I, I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't see why I wouldn't as they're there. I'm gonna make a note on this. I'll, I'll write on this little label, um, which I won't do just now, but I, I will write on that and remind myself to look for these when it comes to doing that color, that'll work. Okay, so we're all done. They look nice and bright and colourful. And yeah, really looking forward to this one. I hope I get on with it well and I will let you know how it goes. Um, but I suspect that I'm going to really enjoy this one. Right, thank you for joining me here today and I will see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>